Okay, in this video, we are gonna look at undetermined coefficients one more time, and we're gonna deal with this interesting scenario where your trial solution is already there when you look at the solution to the complementary equation, um, and what do you do when that happens? So let's take a look at the overall thing. So we know that we're gonna find y sub c, which is the solution to the homogeneous version of the equation, then we're gonna look at g of x, and we're gonna use g of x to determine a trial solution, and we're gonna go through the process and see if we can solve for the coefficients. Um, what's gonna happen in this case is when we make our trial solution and then compare it to y sub c, we're gonna see that we've already got that trial solution. So when that happens, when our generic y sub p is already accounted for by y sub c, you do something that feels a little strange. Uh, you actually just multiply your guess by x. Um, and if that's already there, what you do is you multiply by x squared. And if that's already there, you multiply by x cubed. Um, and you can actually just keep going until you get to a higher power than is already accounted for. So let's take a look at an example because it just sounds really weird. Um, so here's an equation. We wanna solve this. You go through the process exactly the same way you always do, turn it into a homogeneous and solve that. So we have this complementary equation, which is Basically, the equation set equal to zero. Uh, when we do this, we get a characteristic equation, which basically changes all of our derivatives into just r's to powers. So we get r squared minus 4r, and then plus 3 equals zero. Uh, we're going to solve this by factoring. Um, so we have this, and then we know that r1 is 3, r2 is 1. Our um, solution then to the complementary equation is gonna be uh, c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the 1x. You don't need to write that one, but I usually do. Um, okay, so that's the solution to the complementary equation. That's gonna be part of our overall solution. And let's box that off. Now what we wanna do is deal with the non-homogeneous part of this thing. So we look at g of x, which is e to the x, and we've dealt with things like this before. So our initial thought is our trial solution should just be um, like a e to the x. The problem with this is if you look back at our um, complementary solution, these two things are basically the same, right? I wrote c2 for one and I wrote a for the other, but those are the same. That's a problem because it's not gonna give us any additional information when we go through and try to solve. It's just not gonna work for us. Um, so what we do instead is we take our trial, our, our supposed trial, and multiply through by x. So for our particular, we're gonna use a times x e to the x. And this is actually gonna work for us. So let's go through the problem and see how it works out. So we need the derivative, so uh, product rule. So it's first, derivative of second, plus second, derivative of the first, you get this. You always wanna factor this. So we can take out a e to the x, and we just get x plus one, Factoring makes taking the derivatives much easier. Uh, we need the second derivative to be able to substitute. So it's gonna be first, derivative of the second is actually just one plus second, derivative of the first is the original a e to the x. So we get this, factor it again, make your life easier. So take out a e to the x again, and we get x plus two. Um, okay, so we have these three, four, well, we have the equation and these three things. We're gonna substitute. Go to another page and try that. So here are the things we have. Uh, we're gonna substitute, so we have y double prime goes here, uh, y prime is gonna go here, and then y is gonna go here. And then it all equals e to the x. Let's make our substitutions. So it's the quantity a e to the x times the quantity x plus two, and then minus four, the quantity a e to the x, the quantity x plus one, and then plus three, the quantity, ax e to the x. Well, you don't really need to put that in parentheses, but it's a good idea. And then the whole thing should equal e to the x. Okay, so now what we wanna go through and do is look at uh, coefficients of things. So as I start to expand this, I'm gonna get an x e to the x that'll have some coefficient, and I'm gonna end up with just e to the x that has some coefficients. An interesting thing happens when you look at x e to the x though. Um, from the first term, we have uh, a times x e to the x. Then in the middle there, we get minus 4a x e to the x. 
So we're at negative 3a e to the x e to the x at this point. And then that final term gives us a 3a x e to the x. So all of them cancel. So cancel, cancel, cancel. They don't contribute anything. So really, we just need to look at the um, e to the x terms. So from the first thing, I get 2a e to the x. Then I get uh, minus 4a e to the x. And then I get nothing. So overall, I have minus 2a e to the x equals 1 e to the x. If that was a little confusing, you could take a second um, and actually just expand the entire thing. And you'll see what happens with everything. But I think you could probably follow along. So this gives us one equation. We, and there's only one unknown, so that's really good, actually. So uh, we have negative 2a equals 1. So a is negative 1 half. And we're actually kind of done. So this was a little easier than some of the other scenarios that we've seen. Um, we know that a is negative 1 half. And our particular solution is ax e to the x. So y sub p is going to be negative 1 half x e to the x. And then overall, y is y sub c plus y sub p. We found y sub c a while back. So y is c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the x minus 1 half x e to the x. And that's it. So when you're going through this process and you pick your trial, and then you look back at the complementary solution and the trial is already there, multiply your trial by x and that's your new trial solution. Um, it's not that bad. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.